welcome to a year at HitchcockMovies.com. We are your hosts, Jeff and Diane, and this is movie number 47 from 1972, Frenzy. And tonight we've got Hitchcock filming his newest movie in some familiar territory, London, England, uh, for the first uh, film shot entirely in England since 1950's Stage Fright. Um, now, although, you know, when he left England for Hollywood in 1939, uh, Hitchcock hardly stayed in Hollywood, although it's obvious that he preferred to shoot in the studio with uh, constructed sets and lots of rear projection. He, uh, he definitely filmed a lot of these movies on location. Uh, for example, he filmed in various locations in California, San Francisco, uh, Bodega Bay, Santa Rosa. He, he filmed on location in New York City. I can think of two or three films that he filmed in New York City. Um, Virginia, Vermont, Arizona, up in Canada, in, in Quebec City. Uh, the French Riviera, a great uh, on location movie. Morocco, where uh, he filmed uh, The Man Who Knew Too Much, the second one. That was also filmed, a bit of it was in London. Also bits in London, Paradine Case, Under Capricorn. So um, he did get around a lot, but this time for Frenzy, the entire thing is filmed in London. Uh, now a London that must have been very different to Alfred Hitchcock uh, from the one he left in 1939, but perhaps not so much. I mean, Hitchcock always saw the seedier side of places, and and uh, tonight's no different. So speaking of Hitchcock, well, he's, he's 72 years old now, and he has achieved an awful lot in his life. Um, he doesn't need to, but he just keeps on making films because he, he loves doing it. He's famous, he's a cultural icon, he's made more money than he could ever imagine. It must have been um, really just wonderful to come back to London and be the, the local boy who made good. I mean, he probably got the keys to the city, he was met by royalty, really just a, a wonderful thing for him. So, in fact, um, when you're, if you watch the DVD extras on Frenzy, you see footage of Alfred Hitchcock directing tonight's Frenzy on location in England, and uh, we've really never seen film footage of that. It's almost like no one, it no, never occurred to anyone to film Alfred Hitchcock filming a movie until Frenzy, so, uh, but do watch it after you watch Frenzy because you don't want any of these surprises to be spoiled, so. Uh, but we do find an Alfred Hitchcock who's highly motivated to make a movie that is popular with audiences because we've, we've seen an unprecedented three films in a row that were financial failures. The movies were, were flops with, with critics and audiences too, uh, for which uh, the, some of the blame, for various reasons, uh, must rest on the studio, on Universal Studios. And it just, it blows me away. It's hard to believe that, that, that because of the, the studio or because of how things work, that, that a bad movie could be made again and again by Alfred Hitchcock. Um, it just seems so obvious, you know, the, the formula for success. Let's, let's see if we can break it down. How do you make a great Hitchcock movie? Well, number one, let him pick the, the subject matter. Don't force a book on him. Don't, don't force a, a short story or a play on him. And if, and, if he, and if he's doing a book that he wants to do, don't force him to strictly adhere to the book. That never turns out good. Um, secondly, let him pick the screenwriter he wants to work with. Let him it be somebody he has great chemistry with. And, and for God's sake, let them spend enough time writing the movie together so that it's completely done before they start filming. How many times have we seen that not work out? Um, let Hitchcock choose his actors, choose the people he wants to be in his movie, and if you have to force the actors on him because you're the studio and you want your, your actors to be used, make sure that he's sort of okay with some of them. And lastly, leave him alone during the production. Don't micromanage him. We can think of a few movie producers, uh, we won't mention any names, who micromanaged him. Anything else? That, that, seems to be, that seems to do it. And don't piss him off during production. Just let it, you know, it's hard enough for him to get the ideas that are in his head completed onto the, the film. So leave him alone and help him in every way to get that done. That seems so obvious to me. Uh, I don't know. Well, this time uh, Universal Studios lets all of these things happen, uh, which is very exciting. Although it must be said that that's no guarantee it turns out to be a great movie because he did have some failures where things were done his way. What leaps to mind is, is the movie Rope. So... Um, so for tonight's movie, Alfred Hitchcock chooses a book that he's excited about called Goodbye Piccadilly, Farewell Leicester Square, uh, written by Arthur Laburn. It's of course set in London. Uh, Universal Studios lets Hitchcock know that he's not going to have a big huge budget 
multi-million dollar budget like he had in, in Topaz and in Torn Curtain. Uh, but they do approve the subject matter. They think it's, it's a great idea. Encourage him to do the film on location in London, probably because it'll be cheaper and faster and easier to not have to build sets in Hollywood to look like London. And Hitchcock probably jumped at that uh, feeling that they wouldn't be able to interfere with him, they'd leave him alone, and who wouldn't want to go back to England having not filmed a full movie there in 22 years, so that's a very good sign. So Now Hitchcock actually approached, uh, for, to, to write the movie, he, he approached Vladimir Nabokov. Now Nabokov of course wrote the, the book Lolita in 1955, and he declined the offer to write this movie with Hitchcock because his own schedule was, was too busy. Hitchcock uh, finally settled on a, a playwright named Anthony Schaefer to write the script with him. And boy, the, he definitely made sure that the whole thing was done before a produ production started. It's at this point that the movie is called Frenzy. Uh, they, uh, they did settle on that title. Hitchcock really does love those one-word titles for all of his movies. We should run them in all the one-title movies right now. Now, Anthony Schaefer, I mentioned he was a playwright, he wrote uh, the this, this script for Tonight's Frenzy and two neat movies right around that time, Sleuth and The Wicker Man. Sleuth, 1972, later the same year as Frenzy, stars Laurence Olivier and Michael Caine. We've not seen it at the time that we're doing this movie. We're, we're trying to see it. We'd love to see that movie. But both of those movies, Sleuth and The Wicker Man, have been remade in the, in the 2000s. You saw the original Wicker Man? Or the, the re we've seen the remade ones, yeah, you bet, uh, into, into great movies. So, and the two of these, the, these guys, uh, Anthony Schaefer and Alfred Hitchcock, did in fact have great chemistry. In fact, uh, I, I, in my estimation, it's the best chemistry Hitch has had with a writer since Joseph Stefano for Psycho. So that's, very, that's a very good sign. So how about the actors? Well, uh, just to be brief, they were relatively unknown in Hollywood, pr practically unknown in Hollywood. But in the end, Alfred Hitchcock was excited about them and uh, in the end was delighted with their performances. In no particular order, we've got John Finch, he plays Richard Blaney. Uh, we've got an actor by the name of Barry Foster, he plays his friend Robert Rusk. And lastly, Alec McCowan plays Chief Inspector Oxford. Uh, all very well-known actors in England at the time, a lot of them mostly stage actors at the time in England. So, um, no, no Hitchcock Dream Team anymore, of course, we're past that, the Dream Team I was calling for that stretch of films in the, in the 60s, in the 50s and 60s. So, but the musical store, score is done by a fellow by the name of Ron Goodwin. He was a musician for his whole life and then he started composing music for many, many, many movies. He had a long distinguished career and did the music for Frenzy. The cinematographer, interestingly enough, done by a man by the name Gilbert Taylor. He did the cinematography for the Beatles movie, A Hard Day's Night, and he does the cinematography in a little movie called Star Wars, uh, five years later, 1977. That's cool. The editing done was, uh, was done by a man, man by the name of John Johnson, who also edited A Hard Day's Night and ends up editing one of uh, my favorite movies, A Fish Called Wanda, from uh, the 80s. So that's, that's pretty cool. So, so good. There is a cameo to look for here in, uh, in, in Frenzy, and it's at the beginning, as they all are in these, these movies, these later movies. And it's, a, it's important to know, it's 1972 now, so there's no more censors, no more Hollywood production code, and we're going to talk about that after the movie a lot. Um, I've mentioned it a million times all these years, so uh, we'll see what that means to us. We'll see what that means to this movie. No, no censors to deal with. So I would recommend, if you can, and you're like me, to watch this movie with subtitles. It, it certainly helps uh, me a lot. We've seen it a bunch of times, and we're going to do that again right now. So, so good. Let's uh, let's watch this one. Um, Alfred Hitchcock's second last movie from 1972, Frenzy. Let's watch. Thank you.